Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. This month, God is kickstarting something in a whole new dimension. Harvest. It's your harvest season. If you can believe it, if you can receive it, you will see it. It's your harvest season. Harvests. Plural. Glory to God. And it's supernatural. Which means there's no natural force that can limit it or stop it. Hallelujah. God, God has activated something. Glory to Jesus. And what you need to do is make sure you are in position. And make sure you are in faith. Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're talking about the triumphant church. Hallelujah. The triumphant church is a strong church. And the Bible says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So the triumphant church understands the need to be strong in the Lord. It is our responsibility to be strong in the Lord. He provides the strength. We are the ones who will use his strength to be strong. Glory to God. So you can make up your mind to be strong. You can refuse to be weak. Hallelujah. You can decide to be strong at any point in time, no matter what you're facing. Glory to Jesus. So the triumphant church is a strong church. It's a healthy church. Glory to God. And God is bringing us to the place of divine health, where we walk in divine health. Glory to God. Where sickness becomes a thing of the past. Glory to Jesus. The supernatural, the, 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 the triumphant church is also a wealthy church. It's a wealthy church. If there's ever been a time for the church to, to move into that dispensation of wealth, it is now. Glory be to God. This is a time for wealth. Hallelujah. This is a time for the church to operate in its wealth. The kingdom wealth. Hallelujah. And all these, the strength, the health, and the wealth are all from a supernatural perspective. Glory to God. There's only so much you can do in the natural. But when the supernatural kicks in, then when you have reached your limits in the natural, you'll still enjoy the blessings of God. Because it's no longer natural. It's now supernatural. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Supernatural wealth. Supernatural wealth. Is anybody ready for supernatural wealth? I think it's so important because I noticed even that when it comes to things like sickness, I noticed this is my observation. A lot of people, their sickness is, is, um, is lack generated. Lack in their lives has brought sickness. You understand my point? Does anybody bear witness with me? Hallelujah. Glory to God. A lot of hypertension is lack generated. Amen? A lot of fears. People are afraid. And those fears expose you to all kinds of things. But you see, we don't need to be afraid because God has a prosperity package for us. That's why John writes and writes in 3 John 1 and 2, says, say, Beloved, I pray that you prosper in all things and be in health just as your soul prospers. Glory be to God. This tells me it is the will of God. Hallelujah. And as we press into other areas in our Christian experience, we should press into this area as well. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So, so I want to talk about supernatural wealth. I want to talk about supernatural wealth. I had an experience on Thursday morning as I was, as I was in between sleep and wake, wake. You know that kind of time? Hallelujah. I had a vision from, from the Lord. And the Lord showed me, maybe I'll explain the vision later on. In the vision, you were in that vision. You, you were there. They brought you into the vision. Glory to God. In a positive way. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And the Lord impressed in me the need to emphasize prosperity. 
Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because this is our year of supernatural health and prosperity. Glory to Jesus. And there's some people that just need to need that additional, that extra shove from the hand of God to move into another dispensation. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus Christ. So, so I will, I will be faithful to God. Amen. Supernatural wealth. What does that mean? Simple. It means wealth which is orchestrated by the Holy Spirit. It means wealth which is orchestrated by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. You can have wealth orchestrated by the Holy Spirit. Incidentally, you can also have wealth orchestrated by demonic spirits. Yeah? You can have wealth orchestrated by witchcraft. You can have wealth orchestrated by Satan himself. You can have wealth which, you know, people have gone and met, you know, mediums and asked for wealth. And then, and then there's a price to pay. And some are so desperate for wealth that they're ready to pay the price, any price. Hallelujah. Uh, because the price usually uh, is not always immediate, you see. So, so it's easier when you are desperate to make that kind of commitment. When the time comes to pay the price, usually, especially if you've started getting some money, right, then usually you find that you're not willing, as willing to pay that price. And then you want to cheat the system. The system which took you there is the only system that will keep you there. So if you try to cheat the system, unless you break out of the system and go to God's system, God will save you. Amen. If not, if you try to cheat the system without leaving the system, you will die. You can't cheat the system that you have submitted to. As long as you have submitted to it, you can't cheat the system that you have submitted to. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Glory to God. So people go and they pay the price. Amen. They go, and the amazing thing is the guy, the guy who you went to, very interesting, is not ready to pay the price. That's why his condition has not really changed much. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. But then you, you, you're ready to pay the price. And it's usually something very dear to you. And that tells you the nature of Satan. He wants to deprive you of something. He wants to deprive you. He wants you to have sorrow. So that when you have, you can, you have wealth, but you have sorrow. Unlike what God gives to us. The blessing of the Lord makes one rich and adds no sorrow with it. Hallelujah. But Satan will give you something. He, will want, he wants you to, to sorrow. He loves to see your tears. He loves to see your pain at night when nobody sees you. You've made money. Okay, you've made money. You've, you've spilled blood. You've made money. You have parties. You look happy. The emperor, the champion, the lion is here. Yeah. <laughs> but when you reach house at night, all that stuff goes. You're suddenly aware how empty and useless you are. And how much pain you have allowed the devil to pierce your heart with. After all the dancing, after all the pride and show off, you're empty. And then those people die. They die terrible deaths, always. Was it worth it? No, it wasn't. Hallelujah. There's only one champion I know about. <laughs> There's only one emperor I know about. Come on, somebody. Only one Odogu, only one Odogu, only one Odogu, only one Odogu. Yeah, 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 yeah. Say amen, somebody. Hey, glory be the authentic Odogu, the authentic Odogu, the genuine Odogu, the Odogu that passed Odogu. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. You see, that kind of song, uh, that kind of song was, was, was meant 
to be released into the the, 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 the thoughts of a believer. That song was meant to be written for Jesus. Amen? But believers are getting too religious. We're missing on the flows. We're, we're not catching the flows of God. Say amen, somebody. Because if you exalt Jesus like we should, people will not have to go to Babalawo. Because if Jesus can give you what you are looking for, without you having to spill blood, then what's the point? We haven't exalted him like we should. We haven't. Glory be to God. And we have to do it. We have to do it. Say amen. amen. So supernatural wealth is that which is orchestrated by the Holy Spirit. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. And you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. Did you see that? It is he who gives you power to get wealth. The, the verse before, there was a rebuke that some people got wealth and began to say it was by their own power. They forgot the source of their power. Amen? You shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power, power to get wealth. I don't need another power. This one is okay for me. Amen. This word get, this word get here, get wealth, literally means to make wealth. It means to create wealth. It means to produce wealth. So God will not produce wealth for you. God will not create wealth for you, but to give you the power to do so. When you use his power, you can create wealth. Glory to Jesus. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Give me the um, NIV, New International Version. Does anybody really want to prosper in God? Hallelujah. And if you have done anything you shouldn't have done, you can repent. Amen? And if you are willing to repent, I decree that what you have done is canceled. In short, I cancel it. Are you here with me? But you must be willing to repent and submit to God's system. Say amen. amen. Glory to Jesus. But you remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. Come on, somebody. That means wealth is not evil now. It depends on who's your source. Can you see? Who is your source? Who is the one who gives you power to get it? That's, that's the question. Hallelujah. Amen. Give me um, the message translation. Thank you, Lord Jesus. The one, that, the one that gives you the power to get it is the one that will give you the power to keep it. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, think again. Remember that God, your God, gave you the strength to produce all this wealth so as to confirm the covenant. That's interesting. The, the King James says, says to establish the covenant, and it's a wrong translation. Wealth does not establish a covenant. Wealth is the fruit of a covenant. Are you understanding what I'm saying? When you go into covenant with God, the, one of the fruits of, of, of that covenant is wealth. And so it says to confirm so there's a wealth that will come into your life. It will confirm the covenant you're in. People will see a certain flow of wealth and they will have no doubts about who you are in covenant with. That's what happened to Abraham. He was the wealthiest in his whole region and they knew the source of his wealth. They knew who he was in covenant with and they feared his God. Same thing with Job. Same thing with David, all of them. Glory to Jesus. So why should your case be different? Thank you, Lord Jesus. One of the problems is some of these ninjas 
who don't understand the, 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 the scriptures, who attack what they refer to as the prosperity gospel. And anybody who talks like that, I can tell they don't understand the gospel. Because the gospel, by its, by, by its very nature, is a prosperity gospel. By its very nature. The gospel is not a poverty gospel. Amen? Amen. Why? Because it's the good news about God's kingdom. And there's no poverty in God's kingdom. Are you with me? We'll come back here, but I, I, let's go to Luke chapter 4, verse 18. Somebody here needs to prosper. Yeah. You might be the only one that, that has provoked this message, but that's okay. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Who is, who is this now? Jesus. Because he has anointed me to preach. This is first, the first work of the anointing. He says he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. This word here, poor, is poor in the natural. But of course, it's always rooted in the spiritual. But this word poor here means beggarly. It means without means. It means you, are, you, are, you have to go about begging people to borrow you, borrow you, borrow you, borrow you. That's what it's calling poor. And Jesus was anointed by the Holy Ghost. And the first thing he, he was meant to deal with was poverty. Because poverty can be a distraction for you from following God like you should. There are people who compromise their work with God because of money. There are people who, who are loyal to someone who is evil because the person gives them money. And they say things like, well, he, he's, he's helping me. He's helping you. Doesn't mean you compromise your standard. Amen. So God needs to put money in your hand. So that the fear of man will leave you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go back to Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. Hallelujah. It says, remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you power to get wealth. He gives you power to get wealth. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, this power is a reference to ability. It's an ability that comes from the presence of God. It's an ability that comes from the presence of God. And this ability is given to us in several forms. If you can write down, write down. I'm going to give you the forms in which this ability comes to us. Number one, strength. Strength. Because if you're going to prosper according to the will of God, you're going to face opposition. And you're going to have to stand your ground. And you're going to have to be patient enough to endure and to keep pressing in until you press through. Hallelujah. I notice people who started sometimes when they see some serious opposition, they tend to, they tend to just give up. The stress is too much. There are certain parts of your, areas of your Christianity that the devil will spend extra time to attack you. One of which is this area. He doesn't want you to have enough money. He doesn't. One of his greatest fears is that the church will prosper. So what does it do? He brings in all kinds of doctrines of demons. And over the years has spread it in the church. So that believers actually get to a point where they believe that when you prosper, there's something wrong with it. Hallelujah. And so they have that struggle. That's why they say, well, all these prosperity preachers. That statement is rooted in ignorance. You should be looking for a prosperity preacher, not a poverty preacher. In short, let me go a step further. Somebody who's a poverty preacher doesn't, may, let, me, let, me, let, me not, let me not indict them. They don't know, right? They do not know that they're working for Satan. 
They are. They don't know. Because they're keeping the body of Christ powerless. Amen? And when it's time to fund the truth, they don't have money. And guess who has money to fund the lies? Satan. Guess how much of a lie is spreading on the internet? Being funded. By who? Satan. Look at what Satan has done with the internet. How did he do it? Funding. What have believers done to negate it? Not much. It's just recently. We're just trying to rise up recently because we don't have funds. So the Bible speaks about wealth transfer on purpose. But even some believers have rejected that as well. And so the church is kept weak because we're afraid of money. What is money? Paper. Why are you afraid of money? Why? Why do you worship money? Are you understanding what I'm saying? Why is it when you hear about money, something happens to you? Can't you be normal again? Can't you be normal, normal human being? When you hear money, something happens to you. Money. Money. See their faces now, some of them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Why? Glory to God. Why should a preacher hold microphone and tell somebody that or imply that having money is evil? Why? What is money? Money is a slave. Money is meant to be a slave. You should be able to have a lot of money and be stable. What happened? This is that wrong consciousness. Glory to God. And I know. Listen, let me be honest with you. If I just randomly pick to somebody out right now and I gave you, let me not go too far, one million dollars. Did you hear the response? <laughs> ah! Hey! Hey! I'm not doubting that you will take the money. Off. The problem is there's so much respect for money that you would go back to your chair and not hear a word again that I'm preaching. <laughs> That's a problem. That means there's something we need to overcome. Because God wants to bless you so much that you can have so much and not be moved by anything except the Spirit. Hallelujah. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Glory to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I remember one time, I can't remember the details, but... I had to give somebody some money, right? I think it was put inside a bag or something. They had to take it somewhere. Once the person knew how much was in the bag, the person could not even carry the bag. They were shaking. They were shaking. Parkinsonism. <laughs> because what if I didn't tell you now? You will still carry that bag. So why are you so affected? May God deliver us in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And devil is very wicked. He knows how to get people. You make noise, make noise, make noise. I'm powerful. Nobody can, nobody can corrupt me. <laughs> the devil just be laughing. He knows your, your weakness because he knows what you've been listening to. He knows, he, he knows your consciousness. He will just send one person. The person will just come into your office. Hmm? Bring out one bag, big bag hmm, of dollars and put on your table. Open it for you. You will look at the money. You will look at the person. You will look at the money. You will look at the person. The person will tell you all we need from you is one, two, three. You say, eh. <laughs> I 
Hallelujah. No, you may not say I will do it. But there's another way of saying I will do it. That is, eh. Eh. Ha. You people, eh? You people. <laughs> you people. You people should stop this kind of behavior. You people should stop it. Hallelujah. It's just because of the mercy of God. Oh. <laughs> it's just mercy of God. If not, if not, anyway, no problem. Hallelujah. But let me tell you, eh, there's a way I would do this thing. I won't do it like this. You see, there's some, some things I cannot do. You have done it. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory be to God. God wants us stable. So stable. Money will not wipe your senses. Glory be to Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Strength to persevere. Strength. That power will give you strength to persevere. Hallelujah. To stand your ground. To not compromise. And still hold on to what God has said. Hallelujah. And trust God for, for a breakthrough in that area. Strength. Say amen. amen. Number two. Divine thoughts and thinking. Glory be to Jesus. Thoughts. Thoughts and thinking. What's thinking? The way you process thoughts. You see that? The Spirit of God, in the presence of God, he'll teach you how to think. And he'll give you the right thoughts. So that with the right thoughts, you will think right. And that makes a big difference because poverty is a state of the mind. And to overcome poverty, you must overcome that state of mind. You must adopt a new state of mind. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. And one of the ways you know is you see somebody that has a lot of money in court, but they're still poor because of their behavior. Their behavior. Hallelujah. People who always have to prove that they have money are poor. You are poor. You are poor. You did not overcome the state of mind. Money has entered your hand, but you are still poor. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Money without a purpose. You see? Because of a wrong state of mind. So you have to build the biggest house in your village. Why? Why must your house have 65 bedrooms? Why? 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 <laughs> Somebody's watching me online and the person is shocked. Why? <laughs> Nami Tokam. Why? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus Christ. How many rooms? How many people are going to sleep in your house? How many? Most of the time, those rooms are empty. Glory to God. It is village people that sleep there when you're not around. When you're in the city, you don't know how many people have moved inside your house. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Number, two, number, number, number three, enlightenment. And that's connected to what I just said now. Enlightenment. And that deals with knowledge and wisdom. Enlightenment. Knowledge and wisdom to excel. So power is what? Enlightenment. Enlightenment is power. When you receive enlightenment, you have received power. Knowledge and wisdom to excel. Hallelujah. That's what happened to Solomon. He was enlightened 
By what? By the presence of God. He was enlightened. And so he was able to excel above the rest. Because through that enlightenment, knowledge and wisdom came. Receive knowledge and receive wisdom in the name of Jesus Christ. Your days of lack and poverty are over forever. Forever. You will not have to beg around. You won't have to beg people, beg everybody. You won't have to do that in the name of Jesus Christ. I release you from that bondage. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Number four, breakthrough ideas. Breakthrough ideas. Breakthrough ideas for products and services. Breakthrough ideas for products and services. It's all about products and services. It's all about products and services. God can bless you. You can even have a financial miracle. But if you don't do something with the money you got to create wealth that will become transgenerational, that wealth will not go to the next generation. It may not even go to the next year. That's why many complain, Pastor, I made so much money two years ago, but I can't see it. You didn't translate it into wealth creation. They gave you capital through a miracle and you didn't know what to do with it. You spent it. Hallelujah. Products and services. There's a product that people will buy. There's a service that will pay you money for. Products and services. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And in line with that, solutions, products, services, and solutions, and they're all together. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Through what? The breakthrough ideas. How am I going to get those ideas? In his presence. The power to get wealth. When that idea comes, you have received power to get wealth. Glory be to Jesus. I'm not talking to everybody, oh. But those of you who I'm talking to, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. The rest of you, just remain silent. Number five. It also comes in the form of favor. Favor for opportunities. Favor for opportunities. The opportunities of life will come to you on the platform of favor. Hallelujah. Favor means it will go beyond your qualifications. It will go beyond your tribe. Tribal limitations are overcome by favor. Is somebody here with me? Glory to Jesus. It will transcend your gender. Hallelujah. They say this job is not for a woman. But when you show up, they will change their minds. Who am I talking to this morning? Glory be to Jesus. Because it's a platform of favor. And when God goes before you, they cannot resist you. They cannot resist you if God came before you came. The key is to allow God to go ahead. Let God go before you arrive. Let God arrive first. God will speak to somebody for you. Listen, God will speak to somebody. I said God will speak to somebody. God will speak to somebody. On your behalf, God will speak to somebody. And when you show up, they have no choice. They will give you access because God showed up before you showed up. Can I get a witness here? Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Number what now? Number six. People. People are power. People. People for what? Networking. Think about the word network. Net. It's a net. So you have a net of people on your side who will help you receive a great harvest because you have a net, a network of people. Hallelujah. 
Glory to Jesus. And God, when God gives you people, he gives you people who will strengthen your network, not weaken it. It was the weakness of Peter's net that caused the fish to break out of his net. The net was weak. So God will bring you people who will strengthen you. Glory to God. And this network we're talking about is not just networks on your level. Sometimes it's networks below you. God will give you people who you might not even understand their significance until later. So don't treat somebody wrong because you feel they're not, they don't, you, you know rich. That kind of attitude will starve you of people who God will send to you for your future. That means even people who are going to work for you are part of your network. Glory to Jesus Christ. So you've got to be sensitive because when God wants to send you power, he will send you people. There's someone that will show up in your life and what you found complex, what was complicated, that person has the wisdom already from God waiting to manifest it. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. People. People. Number what now? Angels. Angels. For assistance. When it comes to supernatural wealth, you will need the ministry of angels. God will release angels. God will deploy angels to assist you. Glory to God. You will see the movement of angels. You will see the evidence of angels in your business. You will see it. Hallelujah. You will know this thing that happened here wasn't natural. There was a shift here. This guy was going to be a problem. And just before I stepped into the office, something happened and he got up and left the office. And he had to go and poo poo. Say amen. Or, I don't know why sometimes these words come to my mouth, you know. <laughs> Hallelujah. And he ran. He ran to the toilet. And you sat down. And the transaction was completed. Before the purple fever <laughs> left him. He came back sweating. Laugh now. Why can't you just laugh? It's, it's a joke now. It's not a joke. <laughs> Hallelujah. You came back sweating, but you are gone. The Bible says that God will deliver us from wicked and unreasonable people. Wicked people. Unreasonable people. You give them logic, they'll say no. I don't agree with you. Why? You are wicked and unreasonable. May God deliver you from wicked and unreasonable people. In the name of Jesus Christ, may such a person not block your access. In this year of supernatural wealth and prosperity, wicked and unreasonable people would not block you from access. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. God will send you the right people. And God will deploy angels. Angels that will do whatever needs to be done to ensure that your way is smooth. Hallelujah. That will clear whatever needs to be cleared away from your pathway. Hallelujah. And then seed. Oh boy. It's a big one. Seed. Seed. If you don't understand the power of seed, if you don't use it, no matter what you have learned in life, you will be limited. There's certain avenues, there's certain levels of access 
you will miss out on if you don't understand the power of seed. You may even have money in your hands and think you're prospering. And when you get to heaven, God will show you if you had followed my principles, look at where you would have been. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory be to Jesus. Amen. Most people are, are, are living on what I call the sustenance. Because what they call, what they're calling a big harvest is actually sustenance. Because, because what they're calling a big harvest is that they have a nice house. I have bought this house. It's my house. I have these, ni these, these, these three cars, very nice cars. They're my cars. I paid for them. I don't owe anybody anything. That's still sustenance. Anything to do with accommodation is sustenance. Vehicle. Driving a car is sustenance. Hallelujah. Amen. It's sustenance. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You don't move into abundance until you have more than what you need. In other words, you have to go beyond sustenance. So I'll give an example. I have my house. I live in my house, maybe two or three, whatever the, whatever the case is. But I have houses that I need to give out. I'm praying to God to guide me. Who I will give these 10 houses here? You have left sustenance. Your prayer has changed. Your prayer is not, Lord, I need accommodation. Your prayer is, I need to help somebody get accommodation. That's no longer sustenance. That's the place of what? Abundance. Glory be to God. I have cars. I don't know. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not believing God for a car anymore. I've reached a point I can buy whichever car I want to buy. So what's next? I want to be a blessing to people. Lord, show me who I can give a car in the next three months. Show me who I can give cars to. You've entered another level. When you are in sustenance, it's about you. When you move past sustenance, it's about others. It's not about you anymore because you have enough. Oh, Lord, help me. Are you understanding what I'm saying? It's not for everybody. Oh. But those of you who it is for, shout amen. amen. The rest of you can keep quiet. Hallelujah. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Glory to Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Seed. 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 Destinies are made or broken at the point of the seed. The seed. Glory be to Jesus. At the point of the seed. Let me say a few things about the power of the seed. We'll continue next week. The seed is so important to God. The seed. Why? First of all, it gives God the legal right to prosper you. In other words, it gives God the legal right to get involved in your prosperity. It gives him a legal right. God is not legalistic, but God is legal. He follows his laws and principles. Genesis 8.22 While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night shall not cease. Shall not cease. Shall not cease. The minute he said shall not cease, it became a law. It became a law. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So it's no longer just sit time and harvest. It's now a law. Just like it's not day and night, it's a law. Have you ever seen a day that was not followed by night? Somebody help me. We can help you if you have seen such. We can, there's, there's a way we help such people. <laughs> Glory be to Jesus. 
You know what? I want to look for something quickly. In the meantime, you can look at your neighbor and smile. Look at your neighbor and smile. You're looking at me. <laughs> All right. I'm good to go. Go with me to Jeremiah 33. Verse 20. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Jeremiah 33 verse 20. Thus says the Lord, watch this now. If you can break my covenant with the day and my covenant with the night so that there will be no day and night in their season, then my covenant may also be broken with David. He's trying to show how unbreakable the Davidic covenant was. He's letting us know that day and night is a covenant. God is telling us he has agreement with day and agreement with night that it must show up when the time comes. Kaya Mahaya. And in the same, in the same picture, you have seed time and harvest. God has agreement with seed. God has agreement with seed. Seed must obey the agreements. And harvest must agree, obey the agreement. God has a covenant with the seed. And has a covenant with harvest. Is somebody here with me? Don't play with that seed. Oh. Don't play with that seed. It is a connection to your future. It's a law. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. The seed. The seed. First Kings 17 verse 1. Because of time. I, I, I listened to a message by Kenneth Copeland many years ago. And I was given testimony how he was so poor. He and his wife were so poor. He said they didn't have any furniture in the house. They just had one old TV when they put it there. And one stool in the middle. No place to sit. They were so poor. The Copeland's. He said they were so poor that poor people called them poor. I hope that's not your story right now. Then he said he came, came across Ora Roberts first. And Ora Roberts began to speak about seed faith. Seed faith. And he was never, never heard that before. Seed faith. And then he came across Kenneth Hagin, who now advanced the teaching. And began to teach about the principles of prosperity. Wow. He said he began, he and his wife got into an agreement and began to put these things into practice. He said, he said it took about three days out. Where? In the garage. How many of you know if you don't have money, you can't go on a nice vacation. You go to your, your garage vacation. Say amen, somebody. That was where he went for vacation, garage. Three days. He told his wife, I won't eat, I won't eat anything. When I'm ready, I'll come out. So don't bother yourself. Three days after, he came out and announced to his wife that his, his days of poverty are over forever. He was going through books by Kenneth Hagin and listening to messages on prosperity. And he came out and announced because he got a revelation. Bishop Oyedepo read that testimony and was in a condition that wasn't good himself and did the same thing. 
enter the garage. Hallelujah. And after, I think about three days, I'm not sure, some days he came out and announced his wife. My days of poverty are over forever. Look at him now. Hallelujah. Criticize him all you want. You, you no get food. House, what, what, you no get. You are a critic on the streets. Be careful about criticizing people who are prospered. Because where you criticize, you disqualify yourself. If you don't understand it, just keep quiet. Glory be to Jesus. Hallelujah. And I have many testimonies myself. What the Lord did for, for me and my wife and the family. And I'll tell you. So you know these things are real. We're not standing here by mistake. We're standing here based on principles that we have stacked upon one another that allows us and gives us the right to stand here and talk to you like this. Say amen, somebody. Amen. Elijah the Tishbite of the inhabitants of Gilead said to Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel lives before whom I stand, there shall, be, there shall not be dew nor rain these years except at my word. Well, that's a problem because you are in the same land. You have prophesied against the land, but you are in the land. So God has to do something special for you. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, Get away from here. Turn eastward and hide by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. Next verse. It will be that you shall drink from the brook. I have commanded the ravens to feed you. I have commanded the ravens to feed you. Where? At the brook Cherith. Wow. Next verse. So he went and did according to the word of the Lord. For he went and stayed by the brook Cherith, which flows into the Jordan. Next verse. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning. And bread and meat in the evening. Wow. If our supply was entirely dependent on the obedience of ravens, we will have no problem. The problem is human being, not ravens. Ravens will show up and obey God. Human beings will say, hmm, I don't know about that. Satan, get away from me. Because they don't want to obey God. Sometimes that's why there's a delay. Amen? God has to move on people to yield. And sometimes because we have free, we have, we have free moral agents, sometimes they have a right to still refuse God. So God has to find somebody else. That's why praying in tongues is very important. Many things are happening while you pray in tongues. Things you don't even know about are happening. I'm going to teach you that praying in tongues is a very major part of your prosperity. Praying in tongues. Hallelujah. You have sold your seed, right? Go and pray in tongues. When the wrong thought comes, say, no, I have sold my seed. I thank God for my harvest in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you still here with me? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. The ravens brought him bread and meat in the morning, bread and meat in the evening. Next verse, quickly. Next verse. He drank from the brook. Next verse, go ahead. It happened after a while the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land, obviously. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, now watch this. Arise and go to Zarephath, which belongs to Sidon, and dwell there. Watch this. I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. I have done what? Commanded her. So if you go to her, what she's going to hear from you is not new. 
Because I spoke to her before you, you, you would speak to her. I already spoke to her. Does that make sense? All right. Don't try to force people to do things for you. If God has not spoken to them and you're forcing them, you're a witch. That's the truth. By the time you keep pushing, brother, hear God now. What does that mean? <laughs> That's called manipulation. Watch this. Next verse. So he arose and went to Zarephath. When he came to the gate of the city, indeed a widow who was there gathering sticks. Don't forget, she was already what? Commanded. She knew. He called her and said, please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. He's trying to test her. Next verse. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, please, also bring me what? A morsel of bread in your hand. Next verse. As the Lord your God lives, she's swearing now. I don't have bread. Only this small thing, only a handful of flour, only small thing like this. But God already commanded her. Now question. If she was in such a deplorable state, about to dry up, why didn't God give her food? Why didn't God give her what she was praying for? Obviously, she and her child are about to starve to death. So she's praying to God. Why didn't God just give her the, the food she needed? Why? Because seed time and harvest is a law. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. It's a law. God cannot violate his own laws. God will not violate his own laws. He will not. Okay, you pray to me. You need something from me. You need food from me. You need all this from me. This is called harvest that you need. But to get the harvest, you have to sow the seed. So I'm going to give you an opportunity. In other words, in my answer to your prayer, I'm going to send you somebody who represents the kingdom. If you sow the seed, you will get your harvest. Sometimes you're praying to God for something and God is giving you an answer, but you don't know where the answer is coming from. You don't understand the answer. The answer was to do something that will provoke the harvest that you're expecting from God. But you're looking for the harvest to come ready-made. It doesn't work like that. As the Lord your God lives, I don't have bread. Only a handful of flour in a bean. A little oil in a jar. See, I'm gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son. That we may eat it and die. And if she had eaten it, she would have died. Hallelujah. Next verse. Elijah said to her, do not fear. Why? Fear is a problem. Fear is a problem when it comes to what? Seed. And that fear is from Satan. Designed to stop you from what? Accessing your harvest. Do not fear. Watch this. Go and do as you have said. But make me a small cake from it first. Now you know this is a prophet of God, right? This man, if you read his history, is not a wicked man. Why couldn't he have said, go and bake, right? After you finish baking, eat. When you finish eating, give me leftover. He knows it wouldn't work. Because there will be a violation of what? The law. That's not seed time and harvest. You are, you are bypassing the seed to go to the harvest. It doesn't work like that. Hallelujah. He says, give it to me what? First. Give it to me what? First. Why? Seed time must precede harvest. Say amen. amen. Then afterward, make some for yourself and your son. What an instruction. 
You can only give this kind of instruction when you understand the ways of God. First, the man is not a hungry man. Ravens have been feeding him. Next verse. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. In other words, this seed will take you through the famine. I don't know who God is speaking to this morning. This seed will take you through the famine into the, into the harvest. In other words, you will be having harvest before harvest comes. Amen. Oh Lord, help me somebody. Glory be to Jesus. Next verse. So she went away. Remember, God already commanded her. What he's telling her is just to help her, to encourage her. Because God already spoke to her. And that's okay. It's okay for you to be encouraged. But the most important thing is what did God speak to you? So she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and he and her, oh my God, her household ate for many days. This many days is three years, three and a half years, until the rain came back. It was supernatural. This is what we call supernatural wealth. The bean of flour did not finish. The oil did not run dry. Every time they would use some, they would look back, there's still more. Hallelujah. It just kept multiplying because the anointing was in it. Because the seed was sown and it's a law. God has a covenant with the seed. When it is sown, it must produce a harvest. Are you with me? So on Thursday morning, I had a vision. And the Lord showed me something. There was a, some documents. So both of us were reading the documents. And we're trying to figure out why some people in church are not doing well financially. So we had to go through all the documents. Then we saw it in the documents. Ah, we saw that the problem is actually on an individual basis. And that the problem has to do with what? Seed. We saw it. Ha. So I stood up. And you're looking at me. And then he said to me, he kind of understood what was going in my heart. He said, Pastor, don't worry. Talk about seed. Talk about seed. It wasn't like this. Talk about seed. Don't be afraid. Talk about seed, Pastor. We need it. We need to hear it. We need to hear it. Then it disappeared. Then the wife came. Then she was saying, it's true, it's true. We need it, it's true. <laughs> she was supporting her husband. <laughs> Hallelujah. And then he began to give me instructions, different kinds of instructions, all to do with seed time. Hallelujah. Your time has come. I said your time has come. Amen. Glory be to Jesus Christ. Amen. Somebody's about to break into the next dimension Amen. of prosperity. And it's going to be supernatural. It's going to be supernatural. It's going to be supernatural. Shout amen. amen. Lift your hands and give God thanks. Come on. Give God thanks. Give God thanks.